Wow. It started on the 2nd of February in an article in Golf Digest by John Huggin. Phil Mickelson referred to what he called, quote, end quote, obnoxious greed of the PGA Tour. After the second round of the WM Phoenix Open, Charlie Hoffman took both the USGA and the PGA Tour to task for what he deemed to be an unfair penalty. Referencing the threat of a rival Saudi back league, Phil Mickelson and Bryson DeChambeau both responded in support of Hoffman's comments. This is how the events unfolded over the last several days, however, seemingly bringing the discussion to a boiling point. On Thursday, Phil Mickelson made headlines when quotes from a November interview with Alan Shipnuck for an upcoming biography on Mickelson surfaced. The quotes were originally made in the Fire Pit Collective, saying, quote, they're scary blank to get involved with. We know they killed Kadashi and have a horrible record on human rights. They execute people over there for being gay. Knowing all of this, why would I even consider it? Because this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reshape how the PGA Tour operates. They've been able to get by with manipulative, coercive, strong-arm tactics because we, the players, had no recourse. As nice a guy as PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan comes across as, unless you have leverage, he won't do what's right. And the Saudi money has finally given us that leverage. I'm not sure I even want the SGL to succeed, but just the idea of it is allowing us to get things done with the PGA Tour, close quote. As the tournament continued, a who's who of PGA Tour stars pledged their allegiance to the PGA Tour. This is my official, my one and only time I'll talk about this, where I am officially declaring, let's say, my, my fealty to the PGA Tour. You know, I'm a PAC member, and I have a lot of belief in Jay Monahan and the product that they're going to give us on the future. As it goes to the Saudi stuff, like, I'm, I'm all for the PGA Tour. You know, I, look, I, I've done this. I've, I've been a pro for two and a half years. My entire life, I've thought about the PGA Tour. I've thought about playing against Tiger beating his records, whatever, you know, some that might not even be breakable. Um, but I've never had a, another thought of what's what's out there, right? I've never thought about anything else. Like, it's always been the PGA Tour. As it relates to the much-talked-about Super League or whatever we shouldn't describe it as, um, you've made your position quite clear. Not so Super League. Can you look at the people that have already said no? Ram, number one in the world, Colin Morikawa, myself. Like, I mean, you've got... The top players in the world are saying no. So, I mean, that has to tell you something. Speaking of the same, here are the notables that have committed their loyalty to the PGA Tour, some in stronger language than others, to be sure. But it appears that the momentum is certainly shifting away from the Saudi League. There you see Bryson DeChambeau and Victor Hovland amongst the first two. Then messages like this. David Duval, looks like the Saudi Tour and Greg Norman are slowly going away. Good riddance, writes the former world number one. So now where does this leave Phil Mickelson? Rory McIlroy was asked about Phil's comments after yesterday's final round. I don't want to kick someone while he's, he's dying, obviously, but I thought they were naive, selfish, uh, egotistical, uh, ignorant. Um, a lot of words to describe that uh, interaction he had with Shipnock. It was uh, just very surprising and... Uh, disappointing, sad, um, and I'm sure he's sitting at home sort of rethinking his position and, and where he goes from here. Earlier today, PAC member Billy Horschel was a guest on my show, Fairways of Life. He had a very powerful response to Phil's words. I'll put it this way. I think they were a little bit idiotic, to tell you the truth. I think, you know, some of the statements that he made uh, are... are, are are lies are false or I don't know where he got his information from. Um, it's unbelievable that he would say certain things because I think he does understand how the PGA Tour works. He's had a, obviously more experience and more time and more communications with probably Tim Fincham and Jay Monahan over the years. And so for him to say certain things about I'm not just greed and the PGA Tour is sitting on 20, 30 billion dollars and, and some of these other things, which is, is complete lies because I'm in the PAC meeting. I may not see all the numbers that, you know, a player director may see um, in board meetings, but I see a lot. I see enough to understand that the money is, is 
is being used how, correctly and it's being used how the PJ Tour says it is. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's tough because this guy, um, I say this guy, Phil has done so great and he's, he's been a great ambassador to the game of golf and, and I honestly feel he's hurting his reputation and tarnishing his legacy a little bit. Eamon Lynch joins us now. And Eamon, if, if I may, I'll start with you because we haven't heard from you yet. We just heard Billy Horschel talking about the prospect of Phil Mickelson having tarnished his legacy. Uh, he used more than once the word lies, which is fascinating to me because it seems to imply a deliberate intent to deceive. And then he later said complete lies when, when he underscored that mentality. What are we hearing about Phil Mickelson here in the balance. Is is this something that Phil was reacting to in a flash, do you believe? Or in the mind of, of his fellow competitors, do they see it as a revelation of character? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, Phil is in a, in a dark, lonely place and it's of his own making right here, Matt. And it's very hard to see an easy path out of it. At some point, we're going to hear from Phil, but it's not really within his gift in terms of what his recovery from this situation is. In the short term, whatever he says publicly will go some way to deciding whether or not his sponsors stay with him or cut him loose. And I think right now that's probably a 50-50 proposition for Phil. Of more pressing concern to Phil will be the prospect of having left himself open to disciplinary action from the PGA Tour because it's very clear from the outset of this that Jay Monaghan made it clear that if you are involved with this breakaway tour, that you will be subject to disciplinary action up to and including a ban from the PGA Tour. Phil saying what he said to Alan Chipnock may not rise to the level of evidence that the Tour wants. They kind of need receipts on this. But they will be very interested to know if anyone got paid anywhere along the way in this because then that's automatically got to force their hand. There have to be consequences for this for Phil Mickelson and those consequences could have knock-on effects because if he is not a member in good standing of the PGA Tour, well then his ability to play at Augusta National or to defend his PGA Championship would also have to be up in the air. Jaime, reactions to, to things of this sort are always defined by emotions and sometimes emotions can be an overreaction. Are we collectively overreacting to this? Where does Phil go from here in your mind? Well, I think it is a shock, and I think there is a, a big reaction emotionally to go, geez, what a, what a turn of events. This guy's been a superstar and, to some extent, a hero for these last couple of years, especially, and more than just the golf course, in his public image, in his way to manipulate social media, in his entertainment value. And so, yes, it's a big come down from that, and it feels like, you know, whiplash. And I think there's some reaction that way. But I think he has the tools to rehabilitate himself. You know, for one thing, he has immense charm and humor. He's very good at admitting a mistake. He, he knows when to admit he's wrong, and I'm sure he will do it in an artful way. Uh, if he were to win again, that would be the ultimate, uh, I think, rehabilitation because it's the American version of sport washing. Once you win, you know, things, get, things go well. And then the, the final thing is just time. And I think time moves along and people forget, and we've seen that happen with Phil on several crises, you know, whether it's insider trading, uh, any number of things, gambling accusations, a lot of things that he has been able to, you know, endure and fight off and basically be Teflon. And I think there's some of that Teflon still still remains. Right, let's go down that road for a second trip with Trip Eisenhower here about this idea of the, the Teflon. When we get outside of all of this, if we could strip away the emotional element that I was just asking Jaime about and he commented on the same, is there something tangible that you think that we can take away from this dialogue? Well, look, I think Phil handled this about as poorly as you could handle it. I, and especially with those comments coming out about basically getting in bed with the devil uh, to make some changes to the PGA Tour and wholesale changes. They're not needed. But but I, I, I will say one thing that, that is actual fact is the, the players, when they have leverage over the PGA Tour, and it goes back over years, there have been changes, and this is not um, unusual in, in sports. I mean, we see strikes in football. We see strikes in baseball. Why? The players want management to seed things. Well, there is none of that in golf, and golf is very, very uh, unique in that way as far as the fact that it, there is no organization of the players. And it, it is funny because trying to get – 150 PGA Tour players to agree on something is like herding cats. That cannot be done. The only thing that can you can get them to agree on is that golf is very, very hard. They'll all agree on that. 
But I, I think if you go back in time, like in the late 90s, uh, many of these players on tour today won't remember. There was a move afoot to unionize, and all of a sudden there was some seeding from the tour. I'm not saying the tour is messing the players over, but sometimes when there's an A or B decision and it's a management versus players, the PGA ha Tour has an organization that they have to manage, and, and that is a business in amongst itself. But the primary focus of them and the and the charter of the PGA Tour is the players. And I think Phil kind of overstepped that. And that's where I think the players are calling him out and saying, look, overall, we've done very, very well. And Phil has done very, very well over the years. And I will agree with Jaime. I think one thing we can do, and Americans typically do this, if you are contrite and you move forward with contrition, they will be forgive Phil and time will heal these wounds.